This is a commercial graphics shop, but it's hard to find any drawing tables, T-squares, pens, or pencils here. What you do find instead are all these computers and graphics software. For increasingly commercial artists are trading in their manual tools for mice, keyboards, and paint boxes. Today we take a look at business graphics computer style on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, these are the tools that graphic artists used to use, but as we've seen, they're being replaced by computers. Indeed, at that graphics house we visited at the beginning of the program, I did find a T-square, and they said they use it to pull printer cables from behind the desks now. We're talking about business graphics, and I want to know how you would define that as compared to things like desktop publishing, CAD CAM programs, forms generation programs, drawing programs, and so on. Well, Stuart, in business, we're primarily dealing with numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So and way back when, those numbers were really invented to represent objects. Right. You know, how many bags of flour you sell or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Uh, today with high resolution graphics and PCs, we can actually represent the objects, the relative size of things, things of that sort. And in, in group presentations, seminars, uh, board meetings, you can use those overhead transparencies and slides to really represent the concepts more clearly and quickly than you would if you had a whole table of numbers. Gary, today we're going to focus on business graphics on the Macintosh, and we'll take a look at some of the newest graphics programs for the Mac, including the new version of MacDraw called MacDraw 2, a new version of Excel with enhanced graphics capabilities, and a new presentation graphics program called Cricut Presents. Now, when we talk about graphics, we mean more than just graphs and charts. We also include illustrations. We're going to begin by taking a look at a program called Adobe Illustrator, as used at the Esprit Clothing Company in San Francisco. In the fiercely competitive fashion business, the need to bring new products out quickly is often at odds with the need to make continuing changes to a design, often until the last minute. At the Esprit Company in San Francisco, designers have adopted the Macintosh 2 and a program called Adobe Illustrator to help streamline their work. Well, when we first brought the Macs into the design room, uh, I really didn't know what I was going to do with them. I was frustrated in that a lot of our business has to do with change and quick changes. And I became very frustrated uh, in that a lot of the changes were very uh, simple and subtle. Uh, they had to do with color initially, and then the line, line and form secondarily, I'd say. Using software that can manipulate freeform shapes, the designer can experiment with different patterns, forms, and colors before committing them to cloth. That kind of flexibility has brought changes to a workplace where much of the product still depends on a paintbrush and a sewing machine. The biggest changes would probably be um, how, how we think, I think. Uh, <laughs> how we look at what we do. It uh, seems to suggest a more logical uh, way of, of developing a design or thinking about your design concept. The regularity of a computer-generated design is not always an advantage. Sometimes designers want patterns that lack the computer's mathematical perfection, that have a hand touch. Still, the designer's Macintosh has demonstrated its special talents in more ways than one. If I have a pattern and, and we have a meeting tonight and the, the artwork goes out tomorrow uh, and all we're changing is the color, I simply bring up the design and say this, I want changed to this color, it's made. That's simple. Instead of an artist having to come back and repaint the whole uh, item over again.
Joining us in the studio now is Pradeep Singh. He's product manager with Microsoft, the makers of Excel. And next to Pradeep is Marian Kramer, product manager with Claris, Apple's new software subsidiary. They're the makers of MacDraw, Gary. Pradeep, you and Marian are both introducing second generation, or demoing second generation uh, software here. Uh, what is it the, uh, that the customers have asked for in the second generation of business graphics? In the most, most immediate sense, support for the latest version of Apple hardware, in the sense of supporting color, mm -hmm. in the sense of supporting multi-finder, being able to do, make their charting business graphics a lot simpler and so on. Excel's always been a great business graphics product, so there didn't have to be much basic change to underlying functionality. Of course, the new version does a lot of other stuff, but I'm going to focus in on the business graphics Okay, section. can you demo it for us? Certainly. Here's an example of a chart of a table of an insurance premium analysis. Someone's got an insurance payment he makes over 20 years, mm -hmm. and he's got a guaranteed mm -hmm. policy value, he's got a total policy value which the agent promises him. What we're looking at is data which is in a table, but isn't really, doesn't really have a strong impact. Let me make a chart out of this and show you how the impact changes. I select the data, I say new, give me a chart, and notice Excel makes a whole bunch of intelligent decisions. It decides what the axis is going to be. It decides what's going to be plotted here. And in fact, if I go in and say, add a legend, it even knows what the legend should be. Notice, I so didn't say anything to the data. It's scaling the data then down according to the values that were in the table and the time span and so forth. Absolutely. It's yeah. doing both the scalings and it's deciding what point means what. Okay. And now, in fact, I'm going to try and make this chart a little fancier. I'm going to say, give me, Make a combination chart. Give me an area at the back, give me columns in front. Mm -hmm. So I say area, and in fact, Excel will allow me to scroll through pre-built options of the kind of charts that are already there in Excel. And I just walk through that, and I say, ah, I do want an area chart, so why don't you give that to me? Then I'm going to say, I'm going to take an overlay chart type, and I'm going to put a column right on top of the area. I want two series on, the two columns rather than just one. So I go in here and I say, now give me two columns in front. And like that, now I can mm -hmm. go on. And in fact, I just need, talking about user interface, I select a legend, I double click on it, I say give me a shadow, make a border weight, change the kind of text you've got here. Let's say it's Geneva 14, change the position of this legend, put it at the bottom, and go on. Like this, I can keep adding elements to this chart. And in fact, if you like, I can show you a finished version of the same chart. Mm -hmm. There. Now mm -hmm. I've added arrows, I've added a free box, I've got a title over there, I've got some freestanding text, background color, and so on and so forth. You can make a chart very, very nice. And in fact, printed copy of this stuff looks, looks awesome. Okay, now, uh, that brings up the question, what about hard copy? We have to make transparency, slides, uh, how, what do you, how do you handle that, those problems? Bunch of output devices. Uh, you can use, for example, a Tektronix thermal printer, and I have some output from over okay. here from that. Let me show that to you. Yeah. Uh, that's pr it's pretty incredible output. What you're looking at is almost an exact reproduction of what you've got on the screen there. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, you've got a pie chart over here, and in fact, over here you have uh, a stock chart. So you can create some really nice looking hard copy output. Expensive printers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Or you can go to something yeah. like a dot matrix, which is cheaper, not quite the same quality level. Yeah, of course, laser, uh, the laser jet, or the laser printer says you can make uh, transparencies with things like that. Right? True, but black and white. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. the restriction. Exactly. <laughs> color laser is coming, but it ain't here yet. Right. Pradeep, mm -hmm. can I ask you to slide the keyboard and the mouse over to Marian there? And I want to ask you, you said this new version of Excel has features which take advantage of the Mac 2. Uh, can you also run this on a Mac SC, et cetera, and, and have some extra benefit from it too in terms of the graphics? Oh, certainly. A lot of the user interface enhancements are, will, of course, work on an SE2. There's a bunch of other stuff which will work on an SC. It's just the color is available just for the Mac 2, of course. Okay, Marian, we want to, want to take a look at the new version of MacDraw called MacDraw 2. What are the changes in MacDraw? Um, the key enhancements that we've made to the product are in the areas of speed, precision, as well as flexibility. Um, but we tried not to sacrifice the ease of use, which made MacDraw uh, successful in the first place. Can you demonstrate the new Mac draw to sure. show us exactly what you mean? Let me start off by showing you um, the speed enhancement that we've made to the product. Um, this is the kind of scrolling speed you wouldn't get on a Mac draw no matter where you're on it. When you click from one screen to the other, you don't have any more screen redraw, and that makes it a mm -hmm. lot faster to work with the program. But we've as well put in other features to make it easier for the user to work with the program. For example, in this case, I miss Australia. I've already drawn this previously. Now, if I want to um, look through my old documents, I can just open them as a library, and that way, find those objects listed by name, and I can simply retrieve them by clicking on the object and then copying and pasting it into my document. 
So you were just pulling out that map of Australia from some old document that happened to Correct. have that graphic in Correct. it. Correct, and where it saved it by name. Another feature that we put in is a layer feature. So once you have this map, you want to use it probably for several presentations. And that's why we have a layer feature that I can switch on and put transparency overlays on top of my drawing without destroying my underlying mm -hmm. graphics and use them over and over again. When I talk about precision, um, I can now zoom into an area. So for example, if I want to zoom into this polygon and do some editing there, I can do that very easily and I can zoom up to 30 to 100 percent of the original size. And I can now go in and reshape an object very precisely. So for example, a polygon I can hit handles and make very, very precise adjustments to it. Mm -hmm. But that's not all. Another area where we've done enhancements to the product is in the area of, graph, uh, of text. So there are a whole bunch of text features that we've added. One of them that's very important is the rotation of text at objects at any degree. So I can easily rotate an object. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you can see, we've added color to the program. So you can now have um, color in the program. Uh, and you can output it to the same devices in Excel. Um, and in addition to that, you can even print true color separation on the laser writer. If you want no, to Brian, one of the principal advantages of, the, of a draw program mm -hmm. over, say, a paint program is the fact that you can do that vector operation. You can zoom in, zoom out, and it's mm -hmm. sort of representation independent. Um, with the additional tools you have now for reshaping, for example, do you see the draw program sort of taking over the domain of paint at all? Um, it? No, it's still a different program because it mm -hmm. still can't do bitmap kind of graphics. But the nice thing with MacDraw 2 is that you actually can bring in scanned images at any resolution. And then because you can zoom in, you can trace them. And we as well put in a function that allows you to color bitmapped images. So you mm -hmm. have a lot of flexibility to work with scanned images as well as uh, object-oriented graphics. Once again, Marianne, we're seeing MacDraw 2 on the Mac 2 here. Suppose you don't have a Mac 2. Mm -hmm. Most people are in the black and white Mac world still. Are there still advantages to the new version of MacDraw for them? Oh, definitely. All the features that you saw, including the speed, transform back, translate back to the Mac Plus, the Mac SE, and the Mac 2. And you even can do color output from the Mac Plus. You can uh, create color patterns there with little letters What's in a color pattern. I'm sorry, oh, I was going to say, what, what is a typical mm -hmm. customer? Uh, is it a, is it it's secretary, Mac businessman, two, executive? Uh, Mac 2 is used for everything from presentation graphics to desktop publishing, graphic design, as well as low-end computer-aided mm -hmm. design. It's okay. a very versatile tool. W what's the minimum hardware memory configuration you need to really run this? One megabyte. You need a Mac Plus. Mm -hmm. you can't run and for an old Mac Draw user who's mm -hmm. interested in, in this, do uh, you have an upgrade program or something? Yeah, actually, um, if you are an old user, you can uh, call Claris, and they'll upgrade you for $100 to the new package, which is a great price advantage, because the new product will retail for $395. Okay. And the old one was for $195. So. Pradeep, Marian, thank you very much. Now, as we saw, if you have very nice graphics, odds are you want to show them to lots of people. That means taking your screen graphics or your paper graphics, turning them into something like color slides. One product that does that is called Image Maker, and Wendy Woods has a report. LifeScan, a firm that makes a handheld blood sugar tester for diabetics, has been so successful with this product that the company has doubled in size in just a few years. Much of the credit goes to the management and sales teams who design the presentations that will impress their customers. For this purpose, product manager Eric Meyer has discovered ImageMaker from Presentation Technologies of Sunnydale, California. It's a desktop slide-making system which can put color graphics created on a Macintosh directly onto 35-millimeter film. For LifeScan, in-house slide production offers two big advantages. You control the whole process, so you can go right from something in your head to something on the screen and get exactly what you had in mind for a slide. You're not working through an intermediary. Also, uh, you save a great deal in terms of cost. The cost to go outside to make a slide is about $20 to $30 per slide. And when you make it with the image maker, after your fixed cost of the product itself, it's about 50 cents a slide. So there's, there's a great savings in using the image maker. Unlike other slide making systems on the market, the image maker, which costs $5,000, employs a special photo optical technology with font cartridges to create crisp 8,000 line resolution images. Presentation Technologies says it's shipping about 200 image makers a month, and that's a pretty healthy sales figure for a product this new and this expensive. And it indicates that desktop slide making is a concept that corporate America is quickly embracing. In Mountain View, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods.
with us in the studio now is Barry Schuler, CEO of Cricket Software. Next to Barry is the president of Cricket, Dara Muldoon. Dara, we talked earlier about uh, the users of the business graphics programs. Uh, do you have to be an artist to use these programs? Uh, well, if you want to do incredibly sophisticated stuff, I, original, I would imagine it would be nice, but no, you really don't. With the use of templates and uh, drawing tools and so forth uh, in a Cricket Presents type program, I don't think it's necessary so at all. So you're trying to profile your customers, who, who, who uses them? Love, you know, love uh, well, business. to be honest with you, we purposely went to grab the whole market. So mm -hmm. we have made it uh, an excellent black and white program for people who just want to do black and white transparencies on your with your laser writer uh, to your more sophisticated uh, uh, users in your art departments who can use it for uh, 35 millimeter slides or color transparencies. So. Uh, we're gonna pretty wide, wide customers. Yes, absolutely. Barry's already been <laughs> poised here to take off and show the program, so Cricket Presents, right? Okay, well, let's um, start right from someone who's sitting down to do a presentation. Um, a user would begin using Cricket Presents right from the time they start thinking about what they want to say. Mm -hmm. um, the way we help them with that is with a built-in outline processor, the popular um, Acta outline processor, which is right here. I'll blow it up, and you can see I did a little outline to start with, but you could go on and um, just gather your thoughts and organize the way the flow of your um, presentation and get it exactly the way you want it and then go on and begin building your frames. You can keep the window right there for reference or even to use the keystrokes and cut them and paste them into your frames as you're building them. Mm -hmm. um, a feature that helps you build your frames quickly and easily is our templating feature. Um, let's assume that I, that I now want to build a frame that has a headline, a subheading, and a series of bullet points. And I want to create a, a graph with the data that illustrates this, and that's going to be my frame. Well, so when you say build a frame bar, you mean the, the slide, if you were actually, going to show at the presentation. Exactly. Okay. Um, rather than a document processor, which, which has a series of pages, this is a presentation package. And it, a presentation consists of a series of frames. Okay. That could be 35 millimeter frames or overhead frames. Okay. Um, Cricket, Cricket Presents can do any of those different media. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we'll begin building our frame. Um, by going into our template library and rather than having to sit there and, and be an artist and figure out what this frame should look like, we build in a series of templates which are frame formats um, in all different types of varieties that allow a user to go in and say, well gee, there I've got a headline, a series of bullet points and an area for a graphic. And again, these come in the program. These are not things the user has previously designed. That's correct, but okay. they can design their own and okay. save them as save templates. It as a template. mm -hmm. okay. So I'll now apply this template to the frame. And as you can see, um, these are default characters um, showing you where your bullet points would go. And this is a symbol that indicates you can put a graphic in here. That can okay. be an illustration or a graph or a chart. So the program um, is saying this would be a nice looking frame for that's graphic right. display. That's right. In other words, it makes all the artistic decisions for you. Okay. You don't have to be an artist. And you can get um, a very nice looking frame. Um, I'll remove this graphic symbol and, and know that that's a space where I later want to bring in my graph. Um, now I'm going to go back to my outline and rather than having to retype all the information in, I'm simply going to cut and paste. So I'll, um, I'll cut the headline, I'll go back to this window, and I will go into my edit mode and simply paste in my text. Now you notice when I click off of it, uh, the type style, the color, everything's been selected for me. Um, I can do the same thing with the bullet points um, and drop them right into that area, again by cutting, going back. Um, going into the edit mode and just pasting it right in. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, I'm already building my frame. Now, in here... Are there, excuse me, default modes there for the fonts and type yes, size that, and so on? Yes, that maintains um, all of your type parameters, your size, your color, okay. etc. Um, so again, all those decisions have been pre-selected, but it is totally editable. So you could go back so and change those. You could go in right now and make any of the changes okay. in, in formats, or you could just change the color simply from here, mm -hmm. um, select from any okay. of 64 colors. Um, now I want to go and, and show a graphic representation of data that I have for my sales projections, and I can do that right from within Cricut Presents using our graphing tool. Um, the graphing tool will let you create a graph, or um, there's another way, a, again, an easier way to create a graph using our template library. I'll go back to the template library, and in here there are pre-created graphs. Um, I'll go through here. Um, in this case, I'm looking for uh, a column graph. 
Um, and here we have one that I had done previously. And I will apply it to the frame. Now this frame, this graph template doesn't necessarily have the data, my data in it. And the way that I customize this is by simply double clicking on it. I go into the data worksheet and then I would simply... So you have a, a sort of spreadsheet built into the program correct. also? That's correct. It doesn't have the mathematical functions of a spreadsheet, but it is for putting in your data and formatting your, your mm -hmm. um, data. And basically then I would just simply click off and there's my graph. Um, I could enhance this further by going into our drawing tools and perhaps drawing an arrow um, that points out or enhances a particular point on the chart. Um, again, I can select all the different parameters for it, customize it. A sample shows me what mm -hmm. it's going to look like, and then I apply it to the frame, and there's the arrow. Um, there are several drawing tools. In fact, the drawing tools are very comprehensive and in color um, uh, with specialized tools for doing the types of flow diagrams and charts uh, that you would find in a presentation. What about importing uh, graphics and text from other programs? We have programs? very powerful importing features. We support um, uh, all of the popular file formats, PICT, PIC2, mm -hmm. uh, MacPaint, EPSF, and uh, we even let you do some exciting things with the images that you import. I'll bring um, an image right in now that's a PICT file. And even though this was a black and white PICT file um, that was created with another program, I can now take this and with a, a feature called Colorize PICT, I can colorize this by simply assigning colors to all the patterns that appear mm -hmm. And the text is well. the frame version of colorizing old black and white movies. That's right. <laughs> um, Ted Turner would love this. And you can see it automatically colorizes. So uh -huh. people who have a library of, of um, illustrations they may have created can, can use this feature. Um, beyond the actual creation of your frames, we allow you to do your speaker's notes. You, you can use your, um, simply go into um, the note view. And what you would find here is uh, a representation of a screen and you could go into the text editor and then write your speech mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have to move right. along. Just one last question, Dara. Do you see this whole presentation graphics thing? I mean, it's almost like a new desktop publishing uh, boom, isn't it? Uh, I think definitely, uh, but I also think the market could be even larger. Uh, I think, think, look at us at this table. Uh, we are more apt to do presentations than we are to create our own newsletter. Mm -hmm. Uh, personally, so I do. I think the market is quite large, as okay. they have predicted. Dara Barry, thank you very much. That's our look at business graphics on the Macintosh. Next week, we'll continue our look with business graphics for the IBM world. So I hope you'll join us then. In the random access file this week, Tandy has announced a delay in volume shipping of its PS2 clone, the 5000MC. The company says the problem is chip delivery. Intel has announced a new communications coprocessor board that enables a standard bus PC to easily send text, graphics, or binary data to another PC. The board can also send or receive faxes from a Group 3 fax machine and can handle electronic mail. The board's software can be accessed from inside standard business programs such as Microsoft Works, 123, Q&A, Sidekick Plus, or WordPerfect. Apple has unveiled a new 4-megabyte Mac 2. The company says the extra memory is needed for users working with MultiFinder or HyperCard. Apple is also coming out with a 4-megabyte memory upgrade kit for existing Macs. The Supreme Court is planning to put its opinions online. The court has asked for proposals from database providers for a system which could instantly bring high court decisions to lawyers. There is now usually a lag of several weeks before printed legal journals distribute Supreme Court opinions. The Russians were in the Silicon Valley last week not to spy but to buy, and they made a deal with Micropro to develop a Russian language version of WordStar. They were also trying to make a deal to sell IBM compatibles in the USSR. Time for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. For a long time, Apple provided only this fairly basic keyboard for the Macintosh, with no numeric keypad, no cursor control keys, no function keys. The idea was that the mouse and the straight alphanumeric keys would suffice. 
but a lot of power users wanted a choice, so Apple now offers an advanced keyboard for $230. You can get an even better deal, though, if you buy Datadesk International's Mac 101 keyboard. First of all, there's a row of 15 function keys. You can use them to issue commands and pull down menus. There are also cursor controls and a standard numeric keypad. Mac 101 comes with macros for MacWrite and Microsoft Word. Unlike the more expensive advanced Macintosh keyboard, Mac 101 also helps you write your own macros. Once you're in an application, pull down disk accessories and bring up 101 keys. Now there's a 101 item on your menu bar. Plus, the touch of this keyboard is beautiful. It's the best I've ever typed on. And there's an identical keyboard for the IBM PC, making it easier to use an IBM and a Mac together. 101 keys is $170 from Datadesk International. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Commodore is crowing about its first quarterly domestic sales rise in two years, thanks mainly to the Amiga. Commodore earnings doubled for the year on sales of $871 million. Meanwhile, Atari reported a drop in earnings despite healthy sales of its computers. The company blamed the bad bottom line on losses in its federated stores division. The University of Richmond in Virginia is now allowing freshman students to apply via computer. The usually fat application package is now all on one floppy disk, complete with forms, the school's alma mater, and the fight song. If you would like to know what it was like to land a Cessna inside Red Square in Moscow, you can find out now there's a new scenery disk for Sublogic's Flight Simulator 2 that displays the Kremlin environment to see if you can duplicate the feat of German pilot Matthias Roost. Of course, there's one major difference in this simulation. You don't have to end up in a Soviet jail. Finally, Echo Industries has developed a new electronic key system based on voice recognition. You dial in a number code so the computerized system knows what voice to look for, and then you say, open sesame, or something like that, and the lock is open. The company says the system is extremely reliable, if anything, too reliable. If your speech is slightly slurred due to too much alcohol, the computer probably won't recognize your voice and won't let you in. That's it for this week's Random Access. See you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $3 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.